and salutations, everyone. Welcome to Casa de la Bliss. Anna, aka Boondoggle Bliss. I am going to be talking about my closet makeover. It has been a very long journey. Uh, and it's still not over. I began reading that book and before I got too far into it, I dumped everything out of my closet. As you guys will see, I'll insert some pictures and videos here shortly. And I just went to town on my closet. It was rough. There were so many days where I regretted doing it, but I'm good now. And I'm able to talk about it before I wasn't able to talk about it. I was supposed to be doing like a live show or we have a book discussion. No, that did not happen because this was way too hard. And if I needed to talk about it, I would like break into tears or something. It was a rough thing. Anyway, so I'll show you where, um, where I'm at now. Um, I'll show you some of the videos I took from before <laughs> during the entire journey. I actually deleted some videos by accident as well that were on my laptop, so I'm kicking myself. Um, I have some, I had some late night videos where I'm just like sitting in front of my computer going, what the hell did I do to myself? This was a nightmare. So anyway, um, before I jump into anything, I'll take you to the room, which still has unfinished, uh, piles, but I want you to see here are some piles for resale. So I'm excited about that because there's some really good stuff in there. And when it's, when it's good and it's fun to take pictures of, it makes it so much easier for me to do, you know? Um, let's see. This is the room that still has a bunch of stuff. So see these two Ikea bags? Those are um, items I have to post. This is stuff I still have to sort. But everything that needs to be in my closet right now is in my closet. The phenomenal thing I wanted to show you is the number of hangers that are left over. So there's an Ikea bag down there. Look at all the stuff on the couch. And there is more hangers in there. So you know I got rid of a lot of stuff. Okay, so that's that. Then we're going to go into another room. And this is my inventory room where everything is neatly sorted and ready to um, have pictures be taken of those items. I have my mannequins in the back, so all is in good order here. Now let's go into my closet. Gigi, this is not about you this time, okay. So, check this out. So let's take a look at um, my closet before. So here, like at the bottom, I would have my work tops, then I would have my casual tops, then like skirts, uh, tunics, longer things. Then I would have um, dresses up there, sweaters, and then anything longer hanging there, jeans, sweatpants, and then behind here somewhere, I have t-shirts in this box. Then down there I have more skirts, then on this level I can't even get to, I had more sweatpants, like yoga pants and stuff. And then just shoes everywhere. Um, and extra purses and stuff but so while there is some order to it it's just chaos and anytime I would try to go make myself uh, get dressed and make myself ready finding anything that goes with anything in here is just a nightmare so I am taking everything out and I'm doing a closet overhaul
closet. I didn't realize I do have a big closet. And I forgot it was a walk-in closet just because I had all this crap in there. But now I am so overwhelmed as to what to put in. And I'm transitioning from winter to summer because um, I do a seasonal change. Oh my God. Like, it's so overwhelming. I have to sort through all this. Probably like 60% is going to go to be sold. Um on eBay and Poshmark, but right now I am just extremely, extremely overwhelmed with everything and I don't even know, I don't even know where to begin. I guess one thing at a time, one thing at a time. But if you've done a major closet remodel, let me know and tell me it's gonna be okay. Why are you unhappy? I thought if I cleaned my closet, you'd be happy. What? of having a formula and I took a step back and I kind of thought about my life and I realized I have my work uh, work clothing items I have my comfort wear at home and then there's like the clean and comfy stuff and then there's the work clothes the stuff that I'm willing to sacrifice maybe it's poor quality or something but I'm willing to sacrifice and they're the clothing that I would wear to clean the house, to paint, and all that stuff. Then there's my out daytime and nighttime uh, clothing type of stuff. We have the kind of daytime, the running errands. You want to kind of look cute or daytime, a little more formal and dressed up. You're catching lunch with your girlfriends and you want to look super cute. And then there's the nighttime and out nighttime. Um, you can have obviously special fancy type stuff or just like clubby type out, out nighttime. And you know, I don't wear clo clubby clothes. So let me, let me rephrase that. Like clothing that, um, oh, pff, I'm doing it the wrong way. <laughs> I'm such a ding dong. Um, the clothing that you, you're going out to a wine bar with your friends and you want to put on some cute jeans and a fancy top. There's that type of going out, and then there's the cocktail dress going out, and then there's a special fancy black tie event going on. So I kind of have that grouped into two categories, six out nighttime and seven the formal kind of really formal dresses. And then out of that, I realized there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five uniforms that I have acquired over time. And my work uniforms are, well, first of all, there's dresses, so they're not uniforms, but I have skirt outfits, which are a skirt, a top, and generally either a cardigan or a blazer. Then I have slacks outfits, which are slacks, tops, cardigan or a blazer. And then I have my kind of tapered pants or skinny pants and tunics, tops that are longer. Those are my outfits. This is what I wear to work. I have these you can pretty much say three because there's dresses, skirts, and pants. So these three, and I, there's a clear formula with that. 
Then there is my kind of daytime um, uh, wardrobe, and that's um, dresses, pants, tops, uh, leggings, and tunics. God, that's like I can live in that stuff. I'm I'm always wearing little dresses and leggings. Then there's my at home comfort wear. So that's leggings, tunics, jumpers, t-shirts, pants. So you kind of see the overlap. And then the more formal and dressy. Um, and I didn't get to the really formal black tie event stuff yet. But the formula clearly emerged. So now that we have that, I was able to divide my closet up, okay? So behind me are all my skirts, all my work skirts. And they're all generally pencil skirts. And the only skirts that went in there are ones that have a top. So the tops are right here. Those are all my formal kind of work tops. I have blouses, I have um, just regular pullover tops, and that's all just in here okay so I can clearly really quickly put together an outfit I have a top and a skirt then if I want a sweater or blazer to go with it they're just around the corner the blazers and sweaters are here and then the tunic blouses that go with um, with pants are right here and then the pants are down below so boom I can quickly make an outfit and it's all right there and everything is matched up. So if there's a tunic, there are pants to go with it. If there's a skirt, there's a top to go with it. Everything has been put together. And then on this side here, um, I have my like um, informal, fun, casual tops. Those are the tops I would wear with jeans, with some cargo pants or something, or basically with some sweatpants um, to run around. Like for example, this is my daytime outfit here. It's a sanctuary top. I'd wear a white tank top underneath and some, um, uh, some tights and that's that. And then below here are all my comfort wear dresses and tunics. This is what I wear uh, to run around in. Um, I love these kinds of things and dresses, striped dresses, bunch of stripes as you can see, and just basic things to wear around the house. And then here are all my work dresses. All my work dresses, each one of them. The thing I haven't done yet is tried each one of them on to see how it fits, because you know what they say, if it doesn't fit right, it doesn't sit well on you, you're probably not gonna wanna wear it. So I still have that left over. Other than that, you guys, I was able to get rid of like everything. I have a better organization now. Like here, I have all my um, tights and my pantyhose. Here are my undershirts, um, like little undershirts you put on under a semi-sheer blouse, just in like in every different color. Because I have a lot, I like to wear semi-sheer things. Then here are just my like the nice t-shirts. Like all my cute special edition J. Crew and my Zara t-shirts, the ones I would wear out with jeans. Then here I have solid colored t-shirts, just plain solid colors. I didn't have to do anything with my shoes except I did get rid of a lot, but my work shoes are down here, down below. I don't know if you can see, there we go. All my work shoes. And then my casual shoes are here and once I fall in love with a certain flip-flop, and that's mostly what I wear during the summer anyway, like this is my favorite flip-flop. Then I go out, and I've had this for like five years, I went out and just got another pair of this brand in a different color, and that's all I'll end up wearing all summer anyway. Um, I do have some summer boxes I haven't opened up yet that are in storage in my garage, so that's kind of freaking me out, but... All I'm gonna take out of there are a few tube top dresses because I swear like May through September I just wear those tube top dresses with flip-flops that's my outfit for just running errands and doing things and around the house I love it um, 
but anyway besides that I'll take out some dresses and I'll just wear those flip-flops all summer long and then all my other like special occasion and other work shoes are there um, besides flip-flops I do love my uh, Rivas um, Tory Birch Rivas I have them in like every color and then I have an animal print and then my Kate Spades I do have a I might be selling them if you guys are into Kate Spades I have a pair of animal print Kate Spades and because I have my Tory Birch Kate Spades uh, Tory Birch Tory Birch Riva Ballet flats I certainly won't need to go down quality and you know wear my um, my Kate Spades I might be selling those I'm size eight and a half let me know if you want to buy them and that's it that's it. I mean, I do have some boxes up on top. Those are clothing. Like I have a bin for camping clothing. So like all my camping clothes and stuff is in there. And then I have a bin for sweatshirts. I do wear a lot of sweatshirts um, in the summer on a, you know, on a colder evening. If you wear outside with, I don't know, like we've barbecued and then we stayed up, you know, I have a lot of cute, cute sweatshirts that's it and it feels so good I feel like I've simplified and it's amazing it's amazing I it takes me like um, like freaking few minutes to pick out an outfit in the morning and before it used to be chaos. I used to be going through throwing stuff out because it didn't fit. I couldn't go in the closet. Now I have a walk-in closet. But anyway, so now it only takes me a few minutes. It's stress-free. It's I have outfits that go together. Um, everything is ready for me to just put on. It's awesome. I so recommend this to anyone. Yes, it took a long time. Yes, it was grueling, but it feels so good to declutter and simplify. And I bought myself 160 hangers. Um, the You probably saw the pink velvet hangers. And that's all that's in there. So if Oh, and I mean, there are the hangers that hold the skirts, right? The ones with the clippy doodads. But the other hangers are that velvet. And I have about 25 that are left. Don't have anything hanging on them. And I told myself I'm not going to be putting in other hangers. Okay, so that one. <laughs> so now I'm changing already. The one hanging shelf that has my casual tops that hasn't been converted to the um to the velvet hangers all the way so there's i'm gonna run out of velvet hangers but the point being is that if i don't have enough hangers i just have to get rid of something so that's my goal for myself is to go back to the system that if something goes in something has to come out period even if it's not to get rid of but to put away in a bin for another time, another season. That's fine. Not everything's gonna be taken to Goodwill or sold, um, but I just like the simplification aspect of my closet. I, I, I wear the same thing most of the time over and over. Chances are half of the stuff that's in there, I'm not gonna wear. By the end of the summer, it's gonna be unworn. And I'll know which pieces I haven't worn, and that stuff is gonna be sold for Sure. Okay. So the book that prompted this chaos is called The Curated Closet by Anushka Rees. She is from Germany. The book itself is elegant, which is really funny because every time like I picked it up and I looked through it it already made me feel like I need to be a better I need to be a better person and have a more um, stylish closet it was just so clean and crisp and 
has so many amazing things that you can reference. Um, I adore the different helpful sections on the color palettes. I think many, many of us struggle with having a uh, a good understanding of what you know what how to work with the different uh, coloring palettes. So that's a wonderful section in the book. But uh, needless to say. Um, I'm not finished. First of all, I'm not finished. I'm halfway through just as I am halfway through with my closet. And so I'm going to tell you what I've read, what I've found really helpful. Um, and I'm going to do so right now from the perspective of me reading this and I'm redoing my closet. I will have discussions with you later in another show on um, the perspective of a reseller and all that you can squeeze out of this book to further your knowledge of people and their shopping habits and how they view clothing and the formulas and all the keywords. I'm going to um, highlight the, all the keywords that we can use and just kind of understand it more from a shopper and reseller perspective. Right now I'm discussing this book from the perspective of I am redesigning my closet and this is helping me, okay? Um, so let me tell you how this book was divided. Um, I find the organization of this book to be excellent. Um, so first we had part one, which is the basics, and that's where she goes over her philosophy of the curated closet. The second part, which, um, which, was, which is something that I went through in detail, and it ended up... Um, me mapping out everything, all my formulas um, on my wall. That's discovering your personal style. And um, there's this really awesome, I got to tell you, there's this awesome questionnaire in here. And it's tedious to go through. And I'm like, am I really going to waste my time going through this, through this um, questionnaire? Going through this questionnaire was the genesis of all the conversations I had with myself and all the decisions I made when I was sorting the clothing. Let me tell you some of the some of the bullet points in here. What is your favorite outfit that you wore, that you wore during the last two weeks and why? And how did that outfit make you feel? So obviously what is that question doing? It's making you realize what are you feeling comfortable wearing? What makes you feel good? What do you feel confident in? What have you actually worn? And based on that, I took out a lot of stuff out of my closet. That question alone. There are some really cute dresses I had by very good brands, um, like Bailey 44 dresses. Oh, you wouldn't even believe some other stuff. Um, just because I don't feel good in them. I don't feel confident in them. The dresses are beautiful. I did not look beautiful in them, period. That was a big revelation. Um, what was your least favorite outfit and why? Well, that was easy. I don't wear anything I don't like. So that's half my closet. Um, descri describe your current style in three objectives. Adjectives. I still can't. Work in progress. Um, list the five most worn colors. I, I could have easily done that. I definitely have my own color palette. Um, and the what kind of silhouettes and what do I wear more most often? And that's what resulted in you know getting into that whole formula and mapping things out. I love that question. There's a lot more, so you, obviously you'd have to you'd have to read the book, but. In there, in the first section, um, something really spoke to me, and that is when she said, I was stuck in a typical life cycle of a fast shopper. And newsflash, so is everyone else. Everyone else is in that mentality. So how do we as resellers kind of maximize on knowing that and then how do we also create um, 
uh, items for sale that speak to people that don't have this fast fashion mind. And that's kind of where, where I'm headed at with the second episode that we're going to do and talk about the um, how to equip yourself with the facts you learn from this book as a reseller. But anyway, um, let's see. I might have had a full closet, but I didn't have anything to wear that I was actually excited about. And because of that, I always needed more. That is so true. So this book is, think of it as a toolbox full of tips, techniques, exercises, and prompts designed to help you cultivate a strong personal style and build a functional wardrobe that allows you to express it. This book, ladies and gentlemen, is not a once read and put it away. I've been going in there so many times and so often. It's going to be your little, your little um, reference book for a lot of things. Okay, so where was I? I talked to you guys about the first section being the basics, the philosophy. Second, discovering your personal style. And then the last two section, sections, which I have not yet read, are build your dream wardrobe and the art of shopping. And like I said, that will be more relevant for the reselling part. Um, but I have not built my dream wardrobe. Right now, what I've done is I kept the things I want to keep and I wear, but I haven't shopped yet. I haven't completed my outfits yet. I haven't. Oh, there's so much work ahead of me. This is so exciting. But anyway, um, what else was I going to tell you? Um, my style profile. Well, you guys saw my style profile. I talked about it. Um, I, get, I guess I, I do want to discuss the the basic strategy of a curated closet. Let me tell you the five strategic points. Number one, be selective and reserve your closet space for items you love 100%. Not stuff that's like, oh, that's cute, okay. What's the likelihood you're gonna wear it? Yeah, so. Build a wardrobe with items that you love 100%. And if you don't love it, replace it with something you love. Next, be authentic. Forget conventional style typologies like classic or bohemian and create your own unique look. That really spoke to me lots. Because um, we often stereotype or we classify and... It was an interesting thing to think about from that perspective, a, you know, a style that is truly yours, not necessarily that you fit into some category. So that was really good. And as always, I'm going to repeat to you, um, there's your foundation closet. That's like the timeless pieces. And then the trendy stuff, that's like add-ons. That comes in and goes, but your conventional foundation closet is the high quality stuff. We'll talk about that more. Uh, number three, aim for quality. Build a wardrobe of high quality pieces that last more than just a few years. Yeah, for the last 20 years of, no, actually 15, because I started getting better. Last 15 years before that, I, I bought for seasons. I bought for trends. I had no concept of the capsule wardrobe and the foundation pieces and all of that style trumps fashion oh i just talked about that get excited about fashion trends that suit your own style but ignore all others and number five put in the work invest time and thought into developing your style and selecting the perfect garments don't just go and buy a bunch of crap just because it's on sale or it's buy one get one free or because you like the color or whatever we if you have clothes that you wear and you can't wait to get home and get out of them because they were poking you they are holding you tight they are uncomfortable those are clothes you should be getting rid of 
We wear shoes that we can hardly walk in that leave our feet covered in blisters. Yeah. Hi, Mom. It does not hurt to be beautiful. That's what my mom or someone else used to say. If you, if you want to, like, looking good hurts or looking whatever hurt. No, it shouldn't. Especially in 2017. It is the year of comfort, of leisure wear, um, athleisure, and just comfort. Look at the ugly shoes people are wearing. Either Birkenstocks or those flat sandals with two straps. Like, ugly things are in. Why? Because they're comfortable. I know some of the things I shouldn't say are ugly, but they are. They are. There's a lot of minimalist items, very modern, utilitarian that are popular. And because they are very comfortable. I don't feel confident in them. I don't want to buy them, but just think of what's happening. Um, or yeah, this one. This is the one that really spoke to me. We force ourselves to wear pieces that we feel only so-so about because they were expensive. And we don't want to let that investment go to waste. Violation number one with me. I'll go to Nordstrom's or Nordstrom Rack and I'll buy something. I'll drop, you know, like $300, $400 on something. And then I have to wear it. Otherwise, how am I supposed to get my money's worth? What? Why did I waste all that money? I have to wear it. So I wear it, but number one, it's not comfortable. Number two, I don't feel confident. I'm sure there's a three, but I can't think of it right now. You see what I'm saying? Why do we do this to ourselves? Um, let's see. Oh, we keep items that stopped fitting years ago just in case they fit again someday. I violate that. I was a size like a true zero like three years ago and I have so much stuff and I need to accept the fact that I'm not gonna be a true zero again. I'll be wearing fours, twos and fours and maybe some sixes on pants because I have a big butt but I'll never be a zero again. Um, it just won't happen. It just won't. I have my weight loss goals, but they don't take me all the, all the way down to a zero. I got to take all that stuff and get rid of it and pass it on, right? Anyway, God, this book is just so good. So much to talk about. So much self-reflection. Oh, and the chapters that, um, so I told you the sections. But let me tell you the Build Your Dream Wardrobe chapters. So there's Closet Detox, the complete guide. Need that. How to build a wardrobe that fits your life, not your fantasy life. That's so true. Remember when I was getting rid of some of, some of the stuff and I had a haul video and I was like, oh yeah, I'll have this in case I go on a safari. Oh yeah, in case I go do this. Oh yeah, in case I do go to the gym. In case nothing, I'm not going to be doing those things anytime soon. And if I will, I'll go and buy something. So let's get rid of it. So many of us buy clothing items for something that might happen. And then it doesn't. And then it's just there. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, this gown that I found, uh, a Tadashi gown I found at a thrift store, just in case I ever go to an opera or an event, a black tie event, uh, blah, 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 blah. No. Closet Composition 101. That's going to be a great chapter. Selecting a versatile color palette. Business hours. Tweaking your wardrobe for work. I need that. Overhauling your wardrobe. Step-by-step -step roadmap. I've already overhauled my closet. I'm not understanding what that's going to be. Oh, that's like, okay. What I need to buy. How to complete my closet. Okay. Oh, I just remembered as I was um, looking at that. For those of you who are truly stuck and need a visual map on where to even start with a piece, 
how to get rid of it. There's an amazing, amazing map in here. I'm probably not going to be able to find it where it's like start here and then it goes through and asks you questions and then you go through and through and through and then it tells you what to do. For those of us that need that, that map is in here. It's excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I can't find it now. Whatever. If you have the book, you know what I'm talking about. And then, what else is left in here? Uh, how to build a capsule wardrobe, becoming your own best stylist, and then the art of shopping. And that's going to be really good for us to go over. How to shop like a conscious consumer, decision time, when to buy and when to keep looking. How to stop overspending and make the most of your budget. Assessing garment quality, a beginner's guide. Us resellers really need that. Practical pointers for finding clothes that fit well. I'm sure there's going to be amazing terminology that we need to learn um, uh, that we can use. And maintaining and updating your wardrobe throughout the year, a timeline. We need to learn as resellers those events throughout the year that prompt the change in seasons or um, understand that you know summers there's picnics and then there's proms and this and make sure that in our mind we are preparing for for those things and we put our best foot forward um, uh, and shop for things that people are going to be looking for all right so for those of you that are reading this book do you want a live chat or do you want me to just do another episode where we complete the book? I want to understand what you'd like to do, whether you just want to hear me yap and yap and yap and yap, or do you want to be involved in the conversation and go live and talk about it together as a team? Let me know. Your answers will guide the next show on this topic. If there is a fashion book that you think would be awesome to do a video on or you just basically want to recommend it to me um, I'll go out and buy it ASAP so feel free to leave that suggestion down below because of Amazon and our ability to buy from others who found these books at thrift stores that are selling it merchant fulfilled items we can get all these books for such inexpensive amounts. Um, so you recommend it and let me look it over. Let's see if we can do a video on it. And then maybe you want to jump in and do it with me. Maybe you want to have a conversation. I'll set up a Google Hangout and we'll do a joint video talking about the book. Whatever. I love fashion books. I have many already, but I can't wait to see if there are any out there that you think are really good resources for resellers. Ones that talk about different clothing items and names. For example, I've been referring to this book a lot. It's, the, it's called The Style Bible, What to Wear to Work. And I've been referring to it because it has great descriptions of different types of clothing. Like for example, what's the difference between sheath and a, um, what's the other one? Sheath and, oh my lord, I just had it because I was reading about it. Shift. What's the difference between the dress? Can you tell? Can you really tell? Or you don't even know what one means. So I love these types of books that have a lot of definition around styled items and what to be on the lookout for in terms of hems and cuts and all that. Um, and I've been picking it up more and more because I do want to eventually do a video on corporate fashion. I really do. I used to put on those workshops and talk to people about, you know, what to do at work and what not to do. And it was so fun, but I just haven't had any time to organize my thoughts. But picking up this book is uh, kind of motivating me. So anyway, if there's a book, leave a comment down below. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you like this video or you think my time was well spent sharing this information with you, give me a thumbs up. I'm looking to get more thumbs up to kind of let me know that you support me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. I love you all.